what are the steps you go through typically when you're training the, well when you're training the pup all the way up to a trained dog <coughs> well paddy we spoke before about in the puppy stage that we take take the pup out and teach it the basic command the most important command is lie down okay you won't have it when you go to sheep the first time but you will have it you know he it, it he knows what lie down means did you tell me before that that lie down you teach it on a rope on a rope in the yard off yeah. sheep yeah um i'd always that's the first i do that when they're strong pups yeah uh before i bring them to sheep so then i have it when i go to the sheep i won't have it all the time but i'll have it when i need it you know when the dog is near me and i'm in control that's the first then as the pup gets stronger and he's able to pass the sheep head the sheep then I start to teach it balance. So I move and he moves counter to me to, to hold the sheep to me. Yeah. So when he's doing that fluently, that's that's the next stage. You'll teach him his sides while you're doing that. You, he's moving left, you're saying come by. He moves right, you're saying away. And he's just balancing the sheep and you have a stop if you need it. You don't have to have it all the time, but you'll have it some of the time and it'll, it'll just improve all the time. That's the next stage for me. And I generally, when I have them that they know their sides pretty well, I generally, the next step is to introduce the short outruns. Um, let them run down behind the sheep and hopefully stop most of the time and balance the sheep to me. Help them a little bit with your body moving a little bit if you need them to. And obviously you'd bring in the command way here, come by, and the penny drops slowly and slowly. It can increase the length on the out run. So let me just go back. So the first thing is to teach him to stop on the rope, and that's yeah, that's the then first. Then bring stage. him out on the sheep and, and let him teach the sheep, yeah. and gradually introduce way and come by and teach me sides slowly there. That's that's for me the second step. And then and then the next step then is to start doing mini out runs and start stretching <clears> them out. Mini out runs. Um, try and reinforce the stop while you're doing it. You know, you're always working on the stop. Yes. The stop. Uh, Especially, for, well, in work or trialing, the stop is the most important command. If you can stop a dog, you can prevent disaster, whether it's missing a gate or he's going into the yard to take them out from where you're after putting them in, you know? just want to take a second to say that we're part sponsored by CSJ and Away With Dogs. So if you like this interview or ones like it, you'll find lots of them on the CSJ channel there on the Away With Dogs program with some of the world's best handlers. But see, when you said about reinforcing the stop then too, when you're doing the little outruns, you're making him stop, stay there, and maybe you're walking between him and the sheep a bit at the start, and he's yeah. going to stay there as well. Yeah, yeah, and you're, you're teaching him to, to have patience that, and to listen to you. And you, you build up that bond with a dog um, where some dogs are a little bit more strong-headed and, and, and it's, it's harder to get them to, to stop when you ask them because they're keen on the sheep. And other dogs are quite easy to take the stop really well and with those sort of dogs you don't have to reinforce it as much you can he'll he'll stand maybe for a split second and you can let him move on again because you know you'll know your dog's temperament if he's if he's a stronger dog when you say lie down it has to be lie down yes so with a better you're, listener you're, at that stage then you're assessing too what sort of dog you you're have. figuring out but you know if i need to put a lot of pressure on this lie down or if i need to correct back off a little bit that correct it's taking it really yeah well. that's the other stage that stage when you're working close at hand is when you figure out your dog's temperament and what um level of pressure you'll be putting on him as you move forward in this training so say now with your more dog when you got to the stage where you had them balancing sheep to you, and then you put sides on them. And when you put sides on them, you get them going all around. All them. around the sheep, yeah, yeah, all around. And then you start to stretch it out, and you do outruns. And so they're the first, say, three steps. What's next then after that? When I have him doing a little outruns well and fetching the sheep to me well, and I'm pre I, and he knows his sides, I, I think this is important. He has to know the difference between right and left yeah. before you start to introduce any driving. Yes. Um, what length are the outruns at this stage now before you start <clears> driving? <throat> Depending on the dog, uh, you can have a natural outrunner, you could be sending a young dog 100, 150 yards, and then a dog that's not so natural of an outrunner, 70, 50 to 70 yards. Just It's all dependent on your dog. Yes. You have to gauge it as a trainer, you have to watch the dog, and you, you'll know. You'll know. You, you know yourself, Paddy, you could bring one pup out there 
and he could run out 100 yards comfortably and be fairly right at the bottom where another pup would struggle at 70. So you have it's all about assessing your dog at this stage. Yeah, so even if somebody had a, a dog but he was doing it correctly and he was only going 50 yards a day, that's and fine. understood the principle. That's fine once, once, it, once it's right. Yeah. It's better to go 50 yards right than 100 yards wrong. Yeah. Be right at the bottom because the lift is the most important part of a dog trial. Yes. If you lift, if you pick up settled sheep, it makes your job very easy. If you pick up sheep that the dog's after horsing into, running in tight, and they're running and scared, your job becomes very difficult. So it's better to be right at 50 yards, have some depth behind the sheep, and have them quiet and stopped, than send them 100 yards and have a big shamazel down the bottom, and you're in trouble from the word go then. Yeah. You know? So at the 50 yard or 100 yard stage, whatever the outrun is that you're fairly satisfied is right, what comes next then, driving? Well, then I generally start to introduce... Once I know he he know he's clear on his right and left commands, that he knows them automatically without thinking about them, I introduce a little bit of driving then at that stage. I usually start up along a hedge and have the dog, the sheep along the fence, the dog behind him and me walking along the side yeah. and just teach him to follow. Yeah. Right? Some dogs are very good. I had some dogs struggle a little bit to want to head the sheep all the time. But, again, the stop walk on stop walk on a little bit of right and left and as as you progress you can move out in the field a little bit and once the dog is clear that he's pushing the sheep away from you and he knows right from left the, the inside flanks kind of happen on their own yeah you don't have to train you know it's it, it, he's still pushing sheep yes it's just that you're in a different place so it's a confidence thing what did you say to me earlier that the important thing with driving is to stay where he can see you or something. When you start, when you begin to teach driving, the dog has to be able to see you from the corner of his eye. Mm. Most dogs, uh, they know where you are. It gives them a confidence that they can see you and, and, it, and it stops them from turning their heads and looking back. Where is he? Oh yeah, that's the one thing we don't want to drive. No. We don't want to look back to see <clears> where you are. And oftentimes when a dog looks back at you on the drive and you give it, say, away here, you give it the right command. Right, he's looking back, so he's going to go the wrong way. Do you know what I mean? He, yeah. he's, oh, no, nine, he's headed he's, yeah, the wrong way. Yeah, then. so even if he knows his flanks really, if he knows his flanks really well, he's definitely going to take the wrong command. Yeah. You know, so to st to counteract that, so as the dog doesn't start looking back at you, keep him, keep where he can see you. And even when you move away from the fence and out into the field, walk beside your dog out to the side. He knows where you are from the corner of his eye, and he'll take those flanks and, his confidence will build and he'll start crossing at your feet. And yeah. you, it's sometimes better to wait for that to happen rather than force it. Yeah, yeah. Because essentially, I think, a dog fetching sheep and driving sheep, it's the same thing to the dog. Yeah. He's pushing the sheep. Yeah, if he's looking forward on the yeah. sheep... It it's, it's all relative to his confidence in the position of the handler. Yes, yes. It, it, it's the same thing to the dog. He's in behind the sheep and he's going on with them. So it's the only difference in fetching and driving is that you're facing him on the fetch. He can see you. You're not when you're right behind him on the drive. He cannot see you. Yes. So it's a confidence thing. Yes. Yeah. So when you start off, you make it easy and make it so he can see you all the time, and he'll get confident and he'll get to like pushing your sheep away from you. And now you're driving. Off we go. And so when you say about getting the confidence of driving, that's like I was doing a bit there with uh, Cap earlier, and you can sort of see him. And then where he used to be a bit hesitant, now he's kind of saying, oh, I know what yeah, I'm doing here. That's I right. Don't need you. But, but your position was good. You you were where he could see you. Yeah. And yeah. and now now that dog, your cap dog is starting to, it's clicked with him now that, right, I'm pushing sheep away from Paddy. Yes. Okay. Paddy, okay Paddy's, Paddy's there. Place. Like, I'm okay. I don't have to head them every, and bring them back to him. He wants this. Yeah. I'll, and, and it's a confidence thing. And if you, if you start right and instill the right thing in him, from the start and don't make it difficult for the dog give yeah. them all the confidence driving is not an issue like yeah it's like shedding it's not an issue uh, if you if you start it right and just if you take small little increments and you don't be looking for it all the first day correct it gradually comes as we said earlier in, in this chat it's all relative to the dog yeah. some dogs will come quicker some dogs you have to wait on but they will all get it yes like any dog that will work sheep that will fetch sheep will drive it's all down to the trainer. Yes. Yes. So if he can fetch sheep to you, 
and do all that part, I, all you're doing is reversing it around to make him right. <laughs> That's it, yeah, yeah. And Jim Copper said a thing to me, and you probably do it without thinking. I was talking to him there a week ago, and he said, uh, when you're driving, if the dog does look back at you, he said, don't say anything and just wait for him to turn back yeah. on the sheep. He, 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 he will, yeah. Then give him his command, because as we said, if when he's looking back at you, if you give him a, a command, invariably he's going to take the wrong one, like. Yes. Because he's looking in the wrong direction. He doesn't know. He's not. He do, he's lost the sheep at that stage. Yes, he's focused on you. He's focused on you, sheep, not yeah. the sheep. Yeah. You know. So and you're only you're confusing the issue. And then that's one of those things that can become a habit in a dog very quickly. That he can he can start to do that, and and then he looks back for reassurance yes. as well as being confused. Now, a big problem can be once a dog starts driving is to try to drive the sheep 100 yards. Yes. And the further away that a young dog gets from the handler, the less um, confidence he has. You know, he's going to become more unsure and more unsure and more, and then he's going to start looking back and taking wrong commands and widening out and uh, or running out through the sheep. Dogs do different so things. All, all the trainer really needs to do then is take a long-term view. And don't worry yeah. about the distance. It doesn't have to be done in a week. About, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, your, your young dog there, um, You'd probably show the guys a video of him. Like, he's come on, I've seen him three times in the last week, and the improvement is colossal because you're making it up easy for the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a listener, so you're not really hard on the stop because you don't have to be because yeah. the stop is there when you need it. You're keeping where he can see you, and that's what, that's making it, you're making it easy for the dog. That's the trainer's job. Yes. Is make sure the dog understands. Yes, yes. Right, so now, at this point, we have our flanks, we have our stop and our outrun, and we're getting the basics of driving into them. Really, this is sort of all you need, really, is to complete a course, isn't it? Your outrun, your fetch, and your drive, which is a reverse fetch, really, and then your cross drive, which is just going across. Yeah, cross, well, that cross drive is easy for dogs because you're in their vision, you know? And then, say the next thing, then, shedding. Uh, you just mentioned that, that's, that's sort of the next thing. In, well, shedding, shedding is one of those things that, can become a problem very quickly for more for the handler than the dog yes the, the thing about shedding is you have to make it easy the first few times yeah and you have to make be sure your dog understands what you're doing yeah it's always better in my opinion to start shedding on a big flock of sheep rather yeah. than four sheep yeah right because there's more going on and you can walk in through the middle and call in your dog and head off now myself i always go someplace with the sheep that I've shed. Yes. When I get the dog in, and now that can be, some dogs will come in easy to call, some dogs don't want to come in through the sheep. You have to work with what you've got, get them into your feet. Yeah. And then go somewhere with the pack of the sheep that you're on. Yeah. And go with the sheep the dog takes. Yeah. Don't insist on the dog taking the sheep you want. Yeah. Whatever way the dog yeah, turns, five or, three or, or one or, or 11 or 10, or yeah. if he's going that way, you go with him. Yeah. Right? And go. I always go to the fence or a corner or a gate. Yeah. And I let him work those sheep on the wire and I let him have a bit of freedom. And if he's a bit tight or a bit hard on them, I, I, would, I, I wouldn't term. say anything. In the short term, I'd say nothing until he gets. Then he says, right, I'm going with these sheep. There's going to be a bit of fun. Dogs get clever to that. Yeah. Right? And they start to come. They start to, you see them then watching you yeah, and yeah, wanting yeah. to come in they're thinking yeah I think he's yes. going to make a <laughs> yeah 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 and in the come yeah. like I, I had it uh, years ago i was at a trial and i had a pretty good run in a in a, an open trial with a young dog and i was at the pen and i had been doing a lot of shedding all, all that week and i was at the pen and I, everything was going grand and i had a shed right in the mouth of the pen <laughs> <laughs> but but that Ultimately, you thought you were and he thought yeah, he thought we were shedding. The split came, and he was a really, he really enjoyed the shedding, you know. Yeah. <coughs> but um, that's the shedding is, it's just, it's the same as the driving. You have to be careful, and you have to be consistent. Yeah, you yeah. know. And don't ask for too much. Don't time. ask for too much. Paddy is and, the whole and, thing. And yeah. then the last bit, the, the penning, that's kind of a foregone conclusion. Yeah. That's just flanks and a stop. Penning is balance. Yeah, it's balancing the sheep to the handler. Yeah. Like it's it's going back to the very first stage. Yeah. If you, you're teaching your dog to balance the sheep to you, when in stage one we'll call it right. It's it's the same principle at the pen. He's he's balancing the sheep to you. Yes. Yes. 
you know, and you're there, you you know where you want. It's it's all down to balance. Some dogs are very, very good at the pen. Some dogs need a little bit of help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it goes back to stage one, balance and the stop. Yeah. yeah. The stop again, you know you're when you're at the pen, you don't need a dog pushing. Yeah, you just need him holding and covering yeah. like a goal. And the well. stop there is so important. Yeah. Because if he goes wrong it takes a foot too much in it's gone. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. So the control then really is the only the big thing at the end. But that'll be coming anyway by the time you're at that stage of training and you've done all them jobs, all that'll be coming. That the comes, yeah, that, that comes like it's back to stage one then, you know. Yeah. That'll do that'll do for today there and we'll really get back to school and dogs anyway and I hope that's of use there. Thanks, Paddy. <laughs> so if you found this uh, interview useful, maybe you'd give us a like. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here. And maybe you have a young dog that you're starting and you'd like more information about these topics we've been talking about. If you would, you can also check out my Patreon channel. We put up uh, training videos there for a lot of dogs and a lot of these stages we've been talking about here. So you can find any of the links below here in the description.